Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC, an introductory course on point set topology part 2, module 40. So far we have prepared ourselves with uh, the so called global separation properties for the launch of dimension theory proper. That is what we are going to do today. Recall that a space satisfies S2 if and only if it has a basis consisting of Clopen sets. Guided by the observations that we have in the classical setup, the real line with its usual topology has a fundamental system of neighborhood such that the boundaries are just two points which are zero dimensional. If you go to R2, it has fundamental system of neighborhood consumption of, of open disks whose boundaries are circles which are one dimensional and so on. We now make a, an inductive definition of the dimension your uh, key key property is this S2. So, we begin with uh, dimension minus 1 which is nothing but an empty space. Indeed, only the empty space is defined to be of dimension minus 2. Of course, in all other cases, we start with a non-empty separable metric space, just to remind you of that. We say x is 0 dimensional and then we write dimension of x equal to 0 if x has a base consisting of open sets with empty boundaries. You see the same thing as saying that these base elements of this base are Clopen sets. Which is same thing as saying that the space X satisfies S2. Okay, the empty boundary in terms of our uh, inductive dimension is of dimension minus 1. So, this is the key. We will we'll do it like this. It is 0 dimensional if it has a base consisting of boundaries of dimension minus 1. Okay, now, suppose n is some positive integer and we have defined what is the meaning of dimension x is less than or equal to n minus 1. We say x has dimension less than or equal to n, the next one, if it has a basis consisting of open sets u such that boundary of u is less than or equal to minus 1, dimension of boundary of u is less than or equal to minus 1, n minus 1. In that case, we write dimension of x is less than or equal to n. Now, that is for less than or equal to, I have not defined what is this number, it is not number yet the entire thing I have defined namely dimension of x less than or equal to n. What is the meaning of that? Namely, x has a base consisting of open sets such that the boundaries of each of these open sets is of dimension less than or equal to n minus 1. Now, we say x has dimension exactly equal to n. Okay. If the dimension first of all should be less than or equal to n minus 1 as defined earlier here and in addition dimension of x equal to uh, is less than or equal to n minus 1 is not true. This I can rephrase as take the least integer n such that dimension of x is less than or equal to n holds. If you take the one lower than that it does not hold. Okay, so, this n is the least integer such that dimension of x is less than equal to n. So, that least integer is called dimension of x. Finally, we say x has 
dimension infinity if for every n dimension of x is less than or external equal to n is not true. Now, having defined dimension of x as a number, I can always say that for every n dimension of x is greater than or equal to n or greater than or equal to n plus 1, greater than or equal to n plus 2, whatever. It is for each n, it must be greater than or equal to that is the meaning of dimension of x is infinity. Let us take a, a little time to recapitulate what exactly this uh, definition means just uh, logically. Okay. For example, you can easily see that being of dimension less than or equal to n to begin with is a topological property because it has been defined in terms of existence of a base if something is homeomorphic to a space that will also have the corresponding base. What is the property of the base? Boundaries of the spaces have some dimension. What is the boundary under homeomorphism? Boundary of u will go to boundary of the uh, image of the homeomorphism under that homeomorphism. So, boundary. So, inductively if, <coughs> if f from x to y is a homeomorphism, and dimension of x is less than or equal to n, we can prove dimension of f x less than or equal to n inductively. So, where, where does the inductive stop? I take minus to minus 1. When, uh, when you have an empty set, any, anything over or to empty set is empty set, that is all. So, there is nothing more than that. However, under arbitrary continuous functions, the dimension is not behaved well. One would expect that dimension would go down under a continuous function, namely image of a continuous function will be of dimension lower than the, the domain. That expectation is true only if you qualify this one the function to be situated more than just continuous function quite often c1 function will do that job analytic functions polynomial functions they all do that they will never increase the dimension of course we know that dimension can go down very easily for example you can take coordinate projections from uh, r to 0 a continuous function a constant singleton is uh, zero dimension r is one dimension so on. that is easy so what is weird is that just if you take continuous functions you must be knowing the existence of what are called as piano curves the piano curves are such that they are continuous functions from a closed interval to the product of two closure intervals, to the product of three closure intervals, to the product of any number of you know closure intervals. In fact, there are continuous surjective functions from an closure interval into the Hilbert cube itself. We shall not discuss that one here, but we just uh, as a fact we are stating that. Okay. Let x be a space of dimension n for some finite dimension and positive. Okay, then it has subspaces of all dimension 0, of course, empty set is also there, so I can include minus 1 also. 0 less than equal to i less than 10 minus 1. All integers smaller than n, there are subspaces. M minus 1 also you can include, there is no form. Okay, how to start with a given point x in a, x in x? There exists a neighborhood u of x such that boundary of u is precisely of dimension n minus one. For each point, there is a neighborhood because the whole has a fundamental system of neighborhood, right? With this property. Okay, so boundary of u is dimension n minus one. So I have got a subspace of dimension n minus one. But now you apply it to uh, a point in the boundary. Okay, so this way you keep going down, so you get all the dimensions. 
the above property is false if x is dimension infinity it serves one would expect dimension infinity to have all subspaces of all dimension i'm sorry subspaces of all dimension right that is not the case examples of infinite dimensional spaces whose subspaces of finite dimension are all countable countable sets we will see we we have in see easily that they are zero dimensional spaces okay or it may be empty also of course so so this is a paper of uh, hurbig himself so if you are interested in you can look at it and i have given the reference here let us now concentrate our attention on zero dimension for some time slowly we will see uh, we will have to use whatever you have seen in zero dimension to develop it for higher dimension also so let us first concentrate on zero dimension so the first result is if x is a zero dimension space then so is every non zero non empty subset at x prime of x as a subspace topology and a subspace topology okay so how does it prove it very easy being a subspace of a second countable metric space x first of all x prime is also second countable metric space so it qualifies for definition of of dimension but you have already seen that s2 is hereditary okay so x prime also satisfy s2 okay so that come up close this chapter namely x prime must be of dimension 0 Okay, of course we have assumed that it is non-empty. If it is empty, of course it is minus. All examples in our previous chapter, right in the beginning, uh, you can look into example eight point three. They are all zero-dimensional, except for one of them. We have proved all of them that they are. zero dimensional in the sense that they satisfy s2 we didn't call them zero dimensional at that time in the new definition s2 is the same thing as zero dimensional right so only thing that we are left to is to prove that example 5 is zero dimensional that it has a it has a base consisting of boundaries of dimension 0 or boundaries are empty sorry Clopen subsets, so boundaries are empty. So let us uh, prepare uh, to prove that one, and let us have some more uh, uh, theorems which are more useful than just proving that theorem, that proving that uh, example. A countable union of zero-dimensional closed subspaces is zero-dimensional. Just now. we had an example there uh, you know we just quoted a, a paper that said every subspace of uh, what is that is hurevis uh, theorem here paper here you know every subspace of finite dimension is countable okay so of course if you assume that these subspaces are zero dimension countable okay countable then it was fine but that is not necessary e singleton is always zero he is always uh, closed therefore countable union of countable subsets countable uh, set will be automatically of zero dimension because it is singleton e singleton is closed so that is the consequence of this theorem now okay if x is zero dimensional sorry here if x is here so if x is the countable union of zero dimensional closed subspaces then it is zero dimensional proof is easy again if x is n range of 1 to infinity cn where each cn is zero dimensional closed being a subspace of second countable space each cn is second countable and hence each of them is lindelof 
Therefore, our earlier theorem 8.7 tells us that each CN is S3. Remember, S2 implies S3 under Lindelof. That was a theorem. Okay, but then another theorem says that X satisfies X satisfies S3 because it is countable union of these things. Okay, so that was another theorem. I will just quote it here. If X is a T4 space. X is union of it's a countable union of closed sets, each satisfying S3, then X also satisfies S3. So that was a theorem. So you see, all these background material we have proved, that is why our life becomes easy here. So what we have got it here is a countable union of zero dimensional closed surfaces, zero dimensional. Of course, now it looks easy, but we have to use both these theorems. All right. As a corollary, if you have union of just two zero dimensional subspaces, just one of them is closed, then the union is zero dimensional. Of course, this is not direct consequence, but how do we use the previous uh, the, I think countable union of closed sets? That is the key. So, union of two things, one of them is closed, all that you have to do is the other one you must be able to write it as countable union of closed subsets, that is all. Okay. Being zero dimension, all those things will be zero dimensional also, because their subspace is of a zero dimensional space. Okay. So, that is what we will do now. Start with x equal to unions of two closed sub two subsets one of them is closed, both of them are zero dimensional. So, let us assume C1 is closed. Okay. Look at X minus C1, that is an open subset of a metric space. Every open subset of metric space is a countable union of open sets, F sigma set. Okay. So, write X minus C1 is, I ring to 1 to, one to infinity, sorry, countable union of closed sets i ring to 1 to infinity c i prime, each c i prime being closed in x. Okay. So, you must remember this one, we have in the proof of that uh, metric space is paracompact, we had done lots of metric theory there, remember that. One of the thing was to write an open set as a union of countable union of closed subsets. Okay? So, I will show you what it was just to re re recall this was precisely this a n's. Okay? Remember this a n's are defined like this. Okay? A n bars will be greater than equal to 0. Right? If you put equality also here those will be closed subsets. And then this a was union of a n's which is also union of a n bars. So, it is a countable union of closed sets. So, this is how we had we had done that one. All right. Being a subset of C2 because x minus C1 is subset of C2 because x is union of C1 and C2 and C2 is zero dimensional. Therefore, each of these CI is zero dimensional. They are closed. So, now you have a countable union then you can apply the previous theorem. So, now we come to the example, example 8.6, the fifth one there. Namely, we shall prove that the subspace R n m of R n consisting of points exactly m of whose coordinates are rational is zero dimensional. In fact, m equal to 1 and m equal to n we have already proved. Okay. But we are not going to use that, we can directly do that here also, no problem, that is not uh, explicitly used here, no problem. Okay. I can allow 1 less than equal to m less than equal to n, m could be the extreme values also. What do I do? This is some m between 1 and n, right? so choose indices i 1, 
less than i2 less than im less than root n m of them fix them not only that you fix rational numbers r1 r2 rm okay then look at the affine linear subspace which i will denote by l of r1 r2 rm of rn given by these m equations the i th i kth coordinate this is i1 i2 i im so i kth coordinate is equal to this number r k that should be true there are m equation k equal to 1 2 3 up to n okay so that is clearly linear subspace you know shifted shifted at uh, this point uh, x i k equal to r k the uh, coordinate that's all okay so these are affine linear isomorphic to precisely m equations are there inside r n so it is r n minus m okay inside this the subspace l of r1 r2 rm okay of points all of whose other coordinates are irrational is therefore homeomorphic to the subspace of r n minus 1 with the same property namely i n minus m all the other coordinates are irrational that's all how many n minus m coordinates are irrational we have proved that this is already zero dimensional okay so what we have got is in this subspace if you take only those which which have all the all the other coordinates irrational okay then they are zero dimensional okay and they are also automatically closed subspace of that r n minus m that's why they, they, they are uh, you know they are zero dimensional as we vary the m tuples r1 etc r m okay we vary this Uh, the, uh, the coordinates R M belonging to Q power M. Okay, because remember R one R two R M are rational numbers. So when you vary, you will get all elements of Q power M, right? We get a countable union because Q power M is countable. Countable union, which is nothing but the space I am ha having in notation here, Q I one I two I M, which is all X belonging to R N. Such that x ith coordinate is rational, i equal to one to three up to n. Okay. So certain indices were chosen, but you have to be free to choose all of them. So now you take another union, but this time it's a finite union. Okay. When you vary all the indices which satisfy i one less than i two less than i m. there finitely many monotonically strictly monotonically increasing sequence of length n okay therefore by the above theorem q i1 i2 im is zero dimensional and the, the given say rnm is nothing but union of finite union of these things over all the i1 i2 im okay so here are some elementary exercises you can try them on your own of course there will be a ts to help you if you don't get it show that a countable product of zero dimension space is zero dimensional next suppose x is zero dimensional show that its walman compactification is zero dimensional Okay, this may be a little challenging, but if you think a little, maybe you will get it. Let us go to now higher dimension. Okay, so to begin with, of course, we will have some uh, example. The first example, as 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 it should be, our motivating example, namely the real line with the usual topology has dimension one, as I have pointed out. the fundamental system of neighborhoods okay base base is for r is all open intervals right the boundary of the open intervals is just uh, uh, you know two points set 
which is zero dimension. Okay, so that qualifies R to be zero dimension one. Every piecewise smooth curve in any separable Banach space has dimension one. Why? Because look at uh, look at look at the um, smooth parts. They are open parts, right? So they have dimension one. That is enough for us. Why? There is a homeomorphism, diffeomorphism. Okay, on the smooth part, these are diffeomorphisms by inverse function theorem or whatever, wherever you want to say. So in particular, it is a homeomorphism. Okay, so in particular, circles, parabolas, any polygon, etc., all of them have dimension one. In fact, countable union of these things are also finite dimensional inside R2, R3, and so on because each circles, parabolas, whatever they are given by equations, right? So they are closed subsets. Indeed, even finite unions of these objects have dimension one. Countable union, you have to be a bit careful. Okay, you have to assume that they are all closed subspaces. That's all. In example eight point six, that eight, we have seen that the subspace Q L of all points in the Hilbert space L two of n. This is nothing but uh, the little l2 of uh, square summable sequences, right? So you take QL to be the subspace whose core points with coordinates all rational. Okay, so we have seen that this has dimension positive. Okay, we shall now show that it is actually dimension less than or equal to one, and hence. Dimension is equal to one. Okay. So by homogeneity, homogeneity is what any point can be moved to any other point by a homeomorphism inside L two of n. Therefore, you can do instead of proving it every point or finding a base and so on, you can do it at one single point. So you can do it at the origin. So we, what we shall do? We have shown. We will show that. The origin has a fundamental system of neighborhoods with boundary of W equal to zero. Dimension of zero, so the dimension of the boundary is zero. Okay, D uh, dimension zero of the boundary will mean that the, the space has dimension one. That is what we want to show. All right. So it, if we have fundamental system of neighborhoods which are which have Klopan sets. Then it would have been dimension. The space itself will dimension zero, right? So I want to show that these things have dimension. Boundaries are dimension zero. Non-empty first of all, they should be, right? So, so for zero less than r less than one, let us have this notation. S r is all x belonging to L two. Such that the norm of x is equal to r, which is nothing but summation x i square is equal to one. The summation could be infinite. Actually, most of the time it is infinite. So it's a convergent series. Some of some converges to r. Square root of summation x i square. Square root is equal to r. That is the meaning of this one. Take uh, q of s r to be s r intersection q l. Namely, all such points with each x i being rational. It suffices to show that Q of S R is zero dimensional. Why? Because S R is the boundary of, you know, a system of neighborhoods which, is, which forms a base for the space L Q here, uh, uh, for L two here. Okay. So this is a local base at zero. Its boundary is S R. Intersection with Q L we are interested in, so I have to show that this is zero dimensional. For this, we shall identify Q of S R with a subspace of Q H, where H is our Hilbert Q, and Q H is all those points with all the all the coordinates rational. 
this we have seen in zero dimension now. Just before this example, uh, 8.6 only, before this uh, 8 one, the sixth one. So, let me show you that one. So, this was uh, the example here, right. We showed that Q H here is J n or Q of J n. Remember Q H was homeomorphic to this J n that with the product topology and this tau d was the metric how we have pulled it out and so on. So, this Q H is 0 dimension is what we have shown here. Okay. So, I have to go back here now. Okay. So, we are going to show that this Q of S r is I homeomorphic to a subspace of Q of H. Okay. For this, we use instead of H, we use this j power n, namely minus 1 to plus 1 closed interval taken n, this uh, natural number that many times product of countably many copies of minus 1 plus 1. Okay. So, consider the map eta from S r to J n, which is just the identity map. Remember, this is the ball of radius r, r is 0 between 0 and 1, positive but less than 1. Therefore, each coordinate here of a point uh, s point x in s r is between minus 1 and plus 1. Okay, it is between minus r and plus r actually. So, it goes inside this one, its identity, so it is here, there is no problem. Okay. Indeed, it is continuous. Why? Because any function into the product space is continuous if and only if the coordinate functions are continuous. In SR, in L2, if you take just the ith coordinate, that is a continuous function. All right. So, these are continuous functions. So, identity map, we can call it as inclusion map, it is not uh, far away from identity. Inclusion map is continuous. Okay. We shall show that it is an embedding of S r into j power n. Okay. Embedding means what? It is the homeomorphism onto the image. That is all I have to show that. Now, what is the image? Eta of, if you take rational numbers here, you can rational coordinate, it will go into the rational coordinates because it is identity map. Okay. And that uh, that is now our Q L and that is zero dimensional. We will be done, right? So we have to show that this is an embedding, a continuous injection. When is it an embedding? We should either show that it is closed or it is open. Closed map is equal to showing open map because it's already a one-one mapping. Okay, so that's all. We have to. So let us try to show that it is a closed mapping. All right. It suffices to show that it has a closed map. But this is equivalent to the following statement. So take a closed subset inside S R. Its image is closed inside L two. That's what I have to show. Inside J power n this time. The model has been, you know, we have cut down in from L two to. Uh, we took the Hilbert cube and then we are studying j power n. Okay. So, inside j power n, it should be closed. It, that is what I would show. It is the same thing as taking a sequence inside the image okay, and then take that sequence such that each coordinate function is, con is uh, convergent, coordinate sequence is convergent. That is the meaning of a sequence inside the product space is convergent, right? Then I have to show that the sequence is convergent in S R. Okay. So the co correct statement I repeat: given a sequence X n in S R and a point X in S R such that the coordinates sequence X n I converges to X i. Okay. So, all these things are, if you take the eta, eta x i is equal to eta, eta x n of i converges to eta x of i. Okay. 
So x must be inside S n, S r, then only I take eta x. All right. So if this converges to this one, for each i, it should imply x n converges to x inside S r. Now I have to use the topology of L two here. Okay. We hope you have seen the proof of this statement is in the blue color somewhere else. Okay. So if not, you can try it. I have given you a hint here, Cauchy squares. Of course, if you don't get it, we will explain it to you. All right. I think uh, today it is enough. So tomorrow I will continue with the study of higher dimensional spaces. Thank you.